We care. For 26 years, we have been advocating for health rights with you and for you. We are determined to keep at it. Coronavirus is a global pandemic that poses significant threat to public health and tests the resilience of our health system. While implementing the public health and emergency measure, we encourage government to pay attention to human rights and principles around transparency, accountability and respect to rule of law. We remain committed to working with government and other stakeholders in guaranteeing a rights-based response to COVID-19. Kellen, reclaiming rights, rebuilding lives. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja, kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi, pata ushauri wa daktari. I will never forget the day all our lives changed forever. It's now a reality we will all face. In the midst of a global unprecedented crisis, but even in the face of this challenge, during these extraordinary times, we've chosen to do more than ever. What we do is not about us. It's about the people who rely on us every day. It's about keeping customers safe while giving them everything they need most at a price they can afford. Because that is our duty. We are always here for you, and we shall proudly serve every day. Coronavirus disease is now spreading within counties in Kenya from person to person through contact with droplets when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes or through touching contaminated surfaces and objects. Anybody with a weakened body immunity has a greater risk of contracting coronavirus disease. People living with pre-existing medical conditions such as HIV, cancer, TB, diabetes among others must adhere to their treatment to strengthen immunity and therefore should ensure they have a constant supply of necessary medicines. Contact your clinic or health facility for information on how to access treatment. Help others within your network to access adequate supply of essential medicines. Ensure that you remain connected with your local networks for any support and follow the medical guidelines provided by your health facility to prevent coronavirus. Remember to stay updated with information on coronavirus using only trusted reliable channels. For more information on COVID-19, call 719 or dial star 719 hash. COVID-19 is preventable. Protect yourself, your family and the community. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. During this pandemic period, people with disabilities are more vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus. That is why the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, NCPWD, would like to urge you to practice physical and social distancing as directed by the Ministry of Health to stay safe. Remember to keep your commitments if you are a caregiver to a person with disability and to practice high levels of hygiene, love and care. Regularly disinfect assistive devices, wash your hands under running water for 20 seconds and ensure the person you are taking care of does the same. If taking care of someone with intellectual disability such as autism, maintain high levels of cleanliness and ensure their movements happen only when absolutely necessary. Hello, mom. Hey, Carol, mom. I'm fine, thank you. How's that? I'm so sorry, mama. I'm gonna do it today. <laughs> okay, no problems. I'll do it now. Check. Are you sure? Yes, so and I also paid for your cable and I'm sending you credit for this long call you're making right now. Thank you, my son. God bless you. Alright, mama. I love you so much, eh? I'll speak to you later. Legendary beat. Legendary beat. Legendary beat. Legendary beat. 
I get girl from my yard, they get big, big back away, they make me feel amazing, girl. I get one way they give. This is NTV. of the week and this is NTV tonight. Good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Now to some figures and over 4.8 million people have been infected by the coronavirus globally and 317,849 people have died from it. In Africa there are over 87,000 cases while the death toll stands at 2,797. In the USA over 1.5 million people have been infected and 91,124 people have died from it. We'll check on Kenya in just a moment but first these are the day's top stories. Tonight, the pandemic exposes East Africa's pre-existing condition. The results that we are seeing indicate that there is some level of threat from the Tanzanian side. Kama kuna gari natoko pande wa Kenya, imebeba shehena, imebeba mzigo, inareta Tanzania kwanzi leo ni marufuku. How the virus is building a wall at Kenya's border with Tanzania. Also tonight... Ongata Rongai records new COVID-19 cases and now panic spreads like a virus. When they saw the police, yeah, some of them locked themselves in the toilets, some of them ran away. Plus, IEBC finally opened its servers but skeletons fell out. How the ghosts of the 2017 election are still haunting the electoral body. And also tonight... <laughs> There's a really good reason why this elephant is up in the air. Sisi tunashangaa kwa sababu wanaleta hatari. Dofu si ngombe. Relations between man and elephant in Kajiado are up in the air as KWS moves in. NTV tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. Joining us tonight in sign language interpretation is Flora Atieno. Now, Kenya has recorded 25 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours, bringing the national tally to 912. According to the Ministry of Health, 1,139 samples were tested. 23 counties have now been affected. Kajiado has six new cases. Mombasa, five. Nairobi, Kiambu and Kwale have three new cases each. Taveta and Garissa have two new cases and Meru, one. And to the numbers that have uh, recovered, 1,336 and no fatalities were reported today with the death toll remaining at 50. 44,851 people have been tested in total, with the government now saying it has the capacity to test about 2,000 people daily. Now, the coronavirus pandemic may have exposed East Africa's pre-existing condition. 
the distrust between Kenya and her neighbor, Tanzania. According to the latest numbers, 51 truck drivers from Tanzania tested positive for COVID-19 and were denied entry into the country. Well, Kenya now wants her neighbor's help in containing the virus. But as NTV's Kennedy Murethi reports, Tanzania announced her own countermeasures barring cargo trucks from Kenya from entering the country. Kenya and Tanzania seem to be pulling in different directions in the war against the coronavirus and in efforts to safeguard their citizens' interests. The chief administrative secretary in the ministry, Rashid Amin, said the country had heightened the surveillance at their border points, especially with Tanzania, as the number of infections among truck drivers rose. There were also 53 truck drivers who were tested and were positive at the various points of entry on the Kenya-Tanzanian border. They include 51 Tanzanians and two Burundi nationals. All were referred back to Tanzania. Kenya has further announced more measures to ensure those allowed into the country are clear of the virus, including testing Tanzanian truckers before they cross the border. We have to tighten the surveillance at our border points so that we are able to keep away any persons who are infected. We had uh, already had discussions with the Namanga and the border point management to be able to identify a school for that short time that those who have been tested are going to be there so that they are separated and that we manage the movement of the people after testing. In an effort to curb a further spread of the virus in the country, President Uhuru Kenyatta Saturday closed the borders with Tanzania and Somalia, except for cargo, but the drivers will have to undergo thorough screening. The move has not gone down well with Tanzania, who today announced their own countermeasures. Kwamba kwanzia leo, yani kwanzia sasa, kwanzia sasa, kwanzia leo, kwanzia sasa, mda huu. Kama kuna gari natoko pande wa Kenya, imebeba shehena, imebeba mzigo, inaleta Tanzania, kwanzia leo, ni marufuku. Eh. Kwa sababu hatuwezi kuwa na bizaa na watanzania wanakapa zaidi ya wiki nzima, harafu wanatangazwa kwamba wana corona. According to Tanzania, the long queues of drivers waiting to be tested at the Kenyan borders were discriminatory. Na tangu nimekuja hapa ijuma, niliagiza sekta ya afya, ipime baadhi ya watu wanotokea Kenya. Kati ya watu waliopimwa, zaidi ya wasafiri wanotokea Kenya, wa Kenya, zaidi ya kuminatisa wana corona. Sasa hatuwezi kusisi turusu waendele kutoka Kenya na corona zao, waingiza kendani ya nchiri. I understand that uh, there has to be, in the spirit of East African cooperation, countries must be able to talk and come with some common strategy on how to deal with this cross-border pro uh, problem. In a hard-hitting statement released today by the Tanga Provincial Commissioner Martin Shigela, all Kenyan cargo truck drivers will not be allowed into Tanzania, but those from other nationalities transiting through Tanzania to their respective countries will be allowed through. Lakini kwa wenzetu ambao wanatutengenezea mazingira magumu kama mkuu wa mkoa naona watanzania wale huko kwenye eneo hili wanapata shida wametoka Mbeya wametoka Njombe na mimi ndio mwenye dhamana ya huu mkoa. Kwa ndugu zangu tuweze kuelewana hivyo na nyinyi watanzania wala msihangaika kwenda kule kununua bidhaa. Kama mlikuwa mnapenda kununua na mwenyekiti ameniambia hapa 90% wanakutoka upande wa Kenya wanakuja kununua kwetu. Sasa kuanzia sasa tuchukua hatua kwa sababu kila wanapoingia ndani ya nchi yetu Whereas Kenya says it cannot dictate to a foreign country on how it should be managing this disease, it is calling on its neighbors to be a little more vigilant on how they handle these cases, as most of them are now coming from the borders. However, it has says that it is going to intensify testing at these border points to make sure that anybody who comes into the country has to have been checked thoroughly before they are allowed at any of those border points. Kennedy Muraidi, NTV in Nairobi County. Now a section of residents of Kajado North in Kajado County are asking the government to facilitate mass COVID-19 testing to find out just how widespread the disease may be there. 
This is after three more people from the area tested positive for COVID-19, including a grocery store operator. There's concern now about how many people she may have been in contact with. NTV's Brenda Wanga reports. Tension and anxiety in Goroi on Gatarongai. Deserted homesteads evidence of the sweep by the Minister of Health officials here last evening. The officials had been drawn here by the confirmation that one of the residents was amongst the 57 new cases of COVID-19 that were announced on Sunday. The other two had their samples taken at the Namanga Health Center. They were man and wife who had traveled to Tanzania recently. The information gathered is that she was working in some pub um, in Irongai. I don't know exactly where. And then uh, when this pub was constructing uh, to, 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 you know, to comply with the regulations uh, according to the COVID-19, she was taken to hospital for checkups as a, as, a, as a worker in the pub. The Kajiado County CEC for Health, Esther Somoire, in a statement says the Nkoroi woman was a grosser. The woman had no history of travel but had presented herself for testing at the Old Kesasi Health Center. But it would appear that she grew cold feet after the test. Before the results were out, I think some information was leaked to her and she switched off the phone. So that is when uh, the operation was done. Uh, she was not responding. So the public of health official, the police and the chief came around and uh, it was a kind of a raid. The health officials traced her to her house. You know people are ambushed when they saw the police. Yeah, Some of them locked themselves in the toilets. Some of them ran away. That night operation resulted in the rounding up of all the 10 families that reside in that semi-informal area. Residents have expressed concerns and fears that the virus could have spread following the interaction the woman may have had with her neighbors without knowing that she was positive. They now want mass testing to be conducted to establish their level of exposure. Brenda Wanga, NTV. All right, well, have you ever wondered what happens from the time when samples for COVID-19 tests are collected to the time they get to the lab for analysis? NTV's Eunice Omolo visited the lab at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, that's Kemri, to learn more about how the samples are transported safely for accurate results. Here's her report. The COVID-19 test is one of the most invasive and uncomfortable. Since the virus does not reside in mediums like blood or in any other bodily fluids, there is need to create a medium to transport this highly contagious virus. The, the coronavirus uh, started when it struck to our country. Uh, those kits were not enough because the patients or suspects uh, continue, continued building up until when those materials that came got finished, uh, Camry was, was approached and we started making the virus transport media. We have uh, the ingredients. Researcher Julius Moshiri explains to us the process behind the making of this virus transport media. The medium comes in powder form, but it has to be mixed with distilled water and other components to turn to liquid. The medium is prepared in a clean environment to avoid contamination of any kind. It is supplemented with a buffer uh, buffers are to give the right pH of the media required. Uh, so we have to make media which will support uh, the environment where uh, this virus is. Sample is not collected from, the st from sterile areas. And for that, this medium has to be supplemented with antibiotics. These antibiotics that we are using it, uh, sub it is to suppress any bacteria. It's just like to purify the virus. The liquid medium is then put in these small valves that will, that will be used to carry the samples. They are then transported to sample collection points. When it is put here, uh, that uh, splint is, is cut and it is left the, the, co the cotton swab plus the half of the stick is left inside whereby it is the one that is used to 
to pick. And then uh, we have already the, the material from the patient inside the transport, the virus transport media. Other neighboring countries also order this transport media from Cambry. I remember we have sent uh, uh, a batch of about uh, 600 uh, tubes like this one to Somalia because they requested our assistance. The Ministry of Health is yet to start the mass testing that will see the country process about 30,000 samples daily through the Cambry lab. At the moment, the country is only doing targeted testing. Eunice Omolo, NTV, Nairobi. What an interesting insight there. Those research scientists are working tirelessly to bring us those results. Right elsewhere now, and the strike is off, at least for now. Healthcare workers have reached a deal with the government and have postponed their strike for 21 days to allow for discussions, according to the Kenya National Union of Teachers. Meanwhile, though, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Pharmacists Dentists Union is also calling out the government for what they say is a lack of consideration in medical coverage for healthcare workers. The union says that NHIF's decision not to renew the comprehensive civil service cover for workers on the front line is discriminatory. They also say that the personal protective equipment supplied to the counties is substandard and are demanding for better protective measures. Every month, every doctor is deducted an amount of 1,700 from their payslip to what NHIF for the cover. So for NHIF, we again to say they cannot cover the doctors working in the counties, yet these doctors have given up their medical allowance, and in addition, they are contributing 1,700 to NHIF. is a big discrimination. Lack of quality and adequate personal protective equipment, and lack of accommodation for healthcare workers, more specifically those who are handling confirmed COVID-19 patients. They're still going back to their homes and exposing their family members. All right, and apologies there. I believe I said uh, the Kenya National Union of Teachers. I meant to say the Kenya National Union of Nurses, of course, not teachers. All right, now governments across the world have, of course, shut down schools and sent learners home in a bid to keep them from contracting the virus. Well, here in Kenya, the Education Ministry has rolled out an e-learning program, but it has been found to exasperate disparities in the sector. Now, have a look at this. A study by Osawa Agenda and Uwezo Kenya has found that only 22% of learners in the country can and have been accessing the e-learning services, meaning up to nearly 80% are not learning at the moment. Six out of ten public school heads interviewed estimate that less than 10% of their learners are accessing e-learning services. The report has also found that learners in private schools are two times likely to be learning digitally compared to those in public schools. Now, on parental awareness on children's remote learning, the study found that two out of ten parents are not aware that their children should continue learning remotely from home. Parental awareness was also found to vary from county to county, with Mandera at 18%, while Mombasa is at 97%. And of course, notice the disparity right there. All right, on the most utilized platforms of accessing digital learning, 42 out of 100 uh, digital learners access the lessons through television. 27 out of 100 digital learners access materials sent by their schools through WhatsApp and 10 out of 100 digital learners access digital materials from the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. This points to the fact that even those e-learning are not on the same page. And on the preparation of public schools to support digital learning, 9 out of 10 school heads interviewed estimate that less than 30% of their schools have any measures in place to reach children with learning materials. Another 6 out of 10 school heads interviewed estimated less than 10% of their schools have any measures in place to reach uh, those children. Now, here is what the two organizations had to say about the status of education.
Right, apologies, we don't have that soundbite at the moment. Let's move on, though, and the ghosts of the disputed 2017 general elections are coming back to haunt the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission after it published a report of the 2017 election, but with glaring errors. In some instances, winners had been declared as losers, and there was also a mix-up of political parties that candidates used to vie for different seats. The IEBC was forced to recall the report following a barrage of criticism for a commission that has for long suffered a crisis of credibility. NTV's Silas Apollo reports. In a report published on its website, but which was pulled down yesterday, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission say that some of the winners of the 2017 election had actually lost and that those who had been declared losers had actually won in the polls. In some instances, candidates had vied on a different party ticket from that which they campaigned on and sponsored them to parliament. For instance, the report says Suba North MP Milio Diambo ran on Amani National Congress party ticket and not ODM. Milio also lost to one Noah Odiambo, according to the report. In Muoroni, area MP James Onyango Koyo lost to Francis Ogot Ongele of the ODM party. In fact, Koyo was not even on the list of candidates, raising questions about just how he made it to parliament. The late Keno Koth, according to the report, also lost to Judah Martin Oduor in the 2017 election, while former Dagoretti South MP Dennis Waweru had Trump's current MP John Kiari. In Kabondo Kasipo, the rightful MP should be one Sylvans Osele and not Eve Obara, according to the report. The contradictions come at a time when the electoral agency has come under sharp scrutiny over the manner in which it handled the 2017 presidential elections, whose results were nullified by the Supreme Court. And 25%. Calls for the disbandment of the commission have intensified in the past months, with proponents like ODM leader Raila Odinga making them part of the recommendations in the BBI report. Launching the BBI. Odinga, who lost to President Uhuru Kenyatta in 2017, boycotted a repeat presidential election called by the ABC. But the commission says the errors were regrettable. In its Twitter handle, IBC says the commission had recalled the report titled Data Report of the 2017 Election after a few typographical errors occasioned by massive data were noted. It adds that it will correct the documents and upload the right version. Besides the errors, the commission has also come under sharp criticism over its expenditure, especially the amount it paid lawyers during the 2017 and the 2013 presidential petitions. Silas Apollo, NTV. The saturating rains have come just as predicted. But as it happens every other rainy season, the good news is followed by tales of misery as flooding rains, death and destruction in parts of the country. Now those who have borne the brunt of nature's cruel hand have accused the government of employing half measures to stop the floods of devastation every time it rains. Zainab Ismail reports on what seems to be a familiar response to a familiar problem. The impact of the torrential rains experienced in the country has been devastating. A tale marked by death and displacements. More than 250 Kenyans have been killed. Rivers have surged over their banks as dams and lakes spill the excess water into people's homes and farms. Over 800,000 people have been affected, most of them in Tana River, Garissa, West Pokot, El Gio Maraquet, Naivasha, and the Lake Victoria Basin. <laughs> This very profound remaking of a community has felt a largely private process, one they seem to be navigating in relative isolation, far from what's happening in the larger world. Government response to elevate human suffering has been feeble, scripted, and ineffective. 
our mandate is basically the provision of uh, timely, accurate, and uh, reliable uh, weather information. Once we have done that, we expect the other you know, stakeholders or actors to have put in place any measures. We have what we call short-term uh, measures or interventions and long-term. While the weatherman continues to provide near-accurate weather predictions, the question remains why relevant authorities never respond in good time and appropriately. Going forward, we want to ensure that we invest more in the building of our dams so that we harvest and store this water, in the building of dikes along rivers, as well as ensuring that people are moved from those flood prone and landslide prone areas. You know, prevention is better than cure. Harry Kinga Kulikotiba. Indeed, it is. And that should be the government's focus. But for many who have survived the devastation, it is another painful anticipation of what the next cycle will look like if nothing ever changes. Zainab Ismail, NTV. All right, at this point, it's time for a short breather on NTV tonight. But before that, the coronavirus has of course, changed human interaction and hugging and embracing are, well, no longer possible. But a Canadian family has devised a hug glove to embrace relatives. Made of a plastic sheet and duct tape, the hug glove allows people to embrace while avoiding direct contact. Well, this video of Caroline Ellis hugging her mother has gone viral on social media. Look at that. Don't you all just miss that hug? The risk of illness causing jumps is increasing. It is believed that the coronavirus can remain on surfaces in your home for up to nine days. Touching infected surfaces is one of the ways in which jumps spread. Regularly disinfect your floors, countertops, and kitchen surfaces with bleach. And use an effective toilet cleaner inside and outside your toilet bowl. This message is brought to you by Medifacts, Jig, and Hapik. Are we not inviting? We have gifts! Valeria! Mommy, best! Run or die! Party! Complete laundry spray, Mortin Doom Power Guard. Kills disease causing pests instantly. Mortin Doom Power Guard. Buy fresh mboga, vegetables, foodstuffs, meat products, bakery products, detergents, all clothing and footwear, books, board games, gym accessories, households and cookery online. Kindly visit taskies.dpo.store to place an order and get delivered to your doorstep. Agatha, where are we going? To my house, because I, I have to get something What are you in. doing here? I'm calling Dad. Don't! I can't go back to jail just yet, not until I've rescued Mother, since she's with Rocco. How could you have raised your kids to be the selfish, despicable people they've become? I just want you to know that I regret all the terrible things I did to you. I hope you can give me a chance. I want to make it up to all of you. We still have a chance to be together again. We must work together to save our mother. We can be strong together, because we're sisters. Invest in Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Luxury you can afford. Call us today on 0790-300-300 or visit www.optivan.co.ke. Kira! <laughs> Kira? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Valeria! <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> That's why you need the superior protection of Mortin! Mortin 360 degree reach. Only this has 11 fans which enable it to reach the farthest corners. Mortin, total indoor protection. Disinfect and protect your home with JIC. JIC kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels and dishcloths with JIC bleach. Just JIC it.
Welcome back. With the stay-at-home and social distancing directives during this COVID-19 pandemic, visitors showing up at your doorstep is a thing of the past. So when three male elephants showed up in the compounds of Kitangela residents, they were left shocked and frightened to say the least. The trio had made their way out of the Masai Mara game reserve, but were eventually tranquilized by the Kenya Wildlife Service officials, saving residents from losing their farm produce. Well, residents are calling on the officials to stop rampant wild animals in the area, which have caused mammoth damage to lives and property. Ngina Kirori has more. One by one. The three majestic elephants fell down in Musilo area, Kajado West, sub-county. On Sunday morning, residents in Tuala village, Kitengela, woke up to this trio of a male herd, destroying their farm produce. The residents were forced to stay put, and for their own safety, Kenya Wildlife Service officers were forced to dart at the elephants and tranquilize them. But some were still drawn to the wonder of nature, awed by the drama. The elephants are, uh, they remember, they use the, the routes that they used to go. So with time they would want to go back to how they used to pass, but unfortunately there are too many developments around. There are too many people, people have inhabited the areas that once used to be open areas. But this hasn't been the first time that encroachment by wildlife has left residents with a colossal problem, largely owing to the close proximity of Kitengela to the Nairobi National Park. <laughs> One elephant was fitted with a GPS collar to monitor movements, but for now, the three elephants will have to blow their trumpets back in the Masai Mara Game Reserve in Narrow County, where they were transported. Gina Kirori, NTV. What an incredible sight. All right, elsewhere, the international criminal police organization Interpol is shining the spotlight on Juja, a town in the outskirts of Nairobi that's quickly becoming a global hub for cyber crimes. The crimes also unearthed by DCI's Special Crimes Unit involve university students, both past and present. NTV's Seth Olale explores why Juja is on the map for these daring crimes. That Juja has now established itself as a hotbed for cyber crimes is not news, not at least for those who've lived here long enough. A number of who are students of the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, JQUAT. Ian Kinanga and Jefferson Bosire, both students of the university, were among electronic fraud suspects arrested last week by detectives from the DCI Serious Crimes Unit at the High Point residential area in Juja. The students who are said to have colluded with Kevin Oroko, a software developer at a local bank, at the time of the arrest, were found with 400 SIM cards, eight national ID cards, two laptops, and four mobile phones. It's something that we know is happening. We may not know the exact individuals or who is responsible for this, but we know that indeed that there have been cases of cybercrime, and we do know that Jaquat Juja has been a hotspot in the past and continues to be a hotspot for cybercrime activities across the country. But it was the infamous 52 million shillings Kenya Commercial Bank heist in 2017 that put Juja in the limelight as one of the country's sophisticated crime spots. Out of the 52 million which was robbed from KCB through a tunnel in Thika Town and without a single bullet being fired, 17.1 million was discovered in Juja, hidden in a house rented by a woman. It is also reported that the three individuals behind the heist were university graduates. 25-year-old Michael Juma, a former electronic engineering student at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, JQUAT, says he is not surprised by the rising cases of criminal activities in Juja. JQUAT and indeed many institutions across the country 
country are known for producing very qualified, highly technical graduate students, capable of doing extraordinary things with their technical abilities. But um, from the look of it, many the economic conditions of the country and many economic policies that exist across the region do not exactly open up many opportunities for the students. The cybercrime syndicates responsible for a number of electronic fraud cases are mostly run by current and former computer engineering students who often liars with bank employees to manipulate financial systems. A bulk of the 30,000 students from JQuart reside off campus in Juja since the institution's hostels can only accommodate 2,700 students, but some opt to remain in the area even after graduation in the hope of securing white-collar jobs. But when their weight no longer bears fruit, they get creative, at times with the help of law enforcement. Many of these students are highly technical, highly qualified. The government is, for example, is in a situation where they, their records, for example, are highly, you know, uh, analog, for lack of a better term, not digitized. Um, the government has many opportunities to try and bring in their, you know, their equipment, their offices, their capabilities into the 21st century, try and digitize everything. Why not employ many of these students to do that kind of work? Get them to, you know, digitize the government institutions as well. Apart from cybercrime, there have also been a number of violent crimes. In February 2019, Tabitha Mudoni Mwangi and Kelvin Mugendi, both JQuat students, were stabbed by unknown people in Juja. Tabitha succumbed to her injuries. At around the same time, a fourth-year student was arrested for allegedly stabbing his girlfriend. Seth Olale, NTV. The closest FBI agents came to arresting Felician Kabuga, the man long accused of funding the genocide in Rwanda, was in the year 2003 in Karen, Nairobi. William Munuhe, a businessman, had agreed to entrap Kabuga for a meeting at his home, but he was found dead hours before. Well, his death was ruled as a suicide, but for 17 years, his family has been on a painful quest to uncover the truth behind his death. Now Kabuka's arrest brings them some sense of closure. NTV's Melita Oletengues caught up with Munuhe's mother and tells us more. News of the arrest of Felician Kabuga in Paris, France, the man long accused of funding the genocide in Rwanda, was music to the ears of Lydia Wangoi. It has been a 17-year wait for justice for the murder of his son William Munuhe, who in 2003 was helping U.S. FBI agents track down the fugitive. He was killed by a hit squad only hours before the suspect could walk into a trap he helped lay at his current home. Police ruled his death as a suicide. Musiwa yule ni beba, mi iko kwa kesasa, kwa bega yake, anabeba, wacha bebe. Mi nasema wacha bebe, asikie ni musito, pia li nifanyia. For her, it is a mixture of pain and peace. The arrest brings back the sting of his son's death that was mired in the fog of mystery and cover-ups. The quest for justice has been a painstaking one for the family. For 17 years, they pursued leads that turned to dead ends. The path to the truth was at times dangerous. Her husband and Munue's late father was himself a police officer but wanted no part in the family's quest. While Kabuga will not stand trial for the murder of her son, she says the arrest helps her heal the indirect wounds he inflicted. The mysterious death of William Munohe remains unresolved 17 years later. His death is a speck of the numerous cases linked to Rwandan fugitive Felician Kabuga. His arrest is a new ray of hope for the family who now wants him to pay for his sins. Milita, Oletenges, NTV, Nyeri County. And elsewhere, a section of Jubilee members of Parliament have alleged a plot to arrest them over their association 
with Deputy President William Ruto. The leaders hit out at the president over the move to kick out the DP's allies from key House positions, saying it was meant to scuttle the DP's 2022 ambitions. There are threats, there is coercion, there is intimidation. We are aware that there are plans to uh, uh, bring up uh, trumped up charges through DCI, ESEC against particular members of parliament just in an effort to try and coerce them to toe particular uh, uh, political inclinations. And I have said for myself, I, I think I've been very clear and very emphatic that once I take a position, I cannot be swayed from that position, not by the threats uh, to life that have been there, uh, to myself and many other members of parliament who are aligned to the de deputy president, not the threats to remove us from positions, not even the threats to recall us. The only people who can recall us are the people who elected us, but not the political parties that we used as vehicles. Bring all the shenanigans. We are ready for it. But the people are waiting for you. The people are really waiting for you. Whatever that you are doing to William Ruto will be done to you. He dunia ni dunia tambarambovu. Eh, diduara. We unafanya uivi we pia utafanyiwa. He ni mungano haramu. The indication that we are seeing is that uh, there are people who are have an appetite for coalitions at this time. Uh, to my mind, I think it is ill-advised to be forming coalitions at this time. Because even the branding, Kenyans might end up branding you the Corona Coalition. Because you are being formed at a time when people are looking for a solution to Corona, it might not be uh, the time to look for political um, uh, realignments and coalitions. Intimidating leaders who go nowhere, in fact, it is on the reverse. The more you intimidate these leaders, the more solidified the ground becomes. Well, what's President Uhuru's end game in war with Ruto? Deputy President William Ruto's supporters claim the ongoing purge on National Assembly and Senate leaders and rushed changes in House committees are calculated at clearing the way for his impeachment. In your Daily Nation tomorrow, read about the return of the Ruto impeachment talk and why the Tanga Tanga faction of Jubilee is digging in. Plus, a special report on the state of the counties. If you test positive for COVID-19 in some counties, you're likely to receive the best care and support to help you recover. But some counties are sitting ducks. Starting tomorrow, we take you to the ground county by county and you be the judge. All right, time for another break on NTV tonight, but it appears the issue of parliamentarians squaring it out on the floor of the House is not just unique to Kenya. Clashes broke out in Hong Kong's legislature for the second time this month as the city's pro-democracy camp tried to thwart a controversial law that bans insulting China's national anthem. Take a look at that. If we continue to behave normally, this disease will treat us abnormally. Can you tell Kenyan Jew to come to my office immediately?
morning. Good morning. Mimi sipendi unapanguza flow. Hiyo dust uache hapa kwa meza. Clean up. This is the problem, eh? Mm. Next time, when you know selector, yako, mm. utengeneze sandwich zako, we mm. na sandwich za bosu. Selector, the difference is in the taste. Hii wende weke kwa hile githeri yako, eh? <laughs> Do your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, myrrh, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Selena! Toto, where is mommy? Today is a toilet day. What? Oh, oh. <gasps> Selena! Toilet day? Tomorrow we're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. It's a toilet. Not a white shirt. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with bleach and detergent, it won't be party ready. Impossible. Challenge. Happy 10X. Even if you use bleach and detergent 10 times, they won't give you the same sparkling clean toilet that Happy 10X will give you. Wow! Happy 10X. Happy, Kenya's number one toilet cleaner. I'm here today to give you a few tips about how we're able to flatten the curve and curb the spread of this virus. Ensure you wash your hands as often as possible with soap and running water. Stay at home to protect yourself, your family and your loved ones. If you have to leave the house, ensure you wear a mask. And if you live with small kids, ensure they wear the masks too. While outside there, ensure you keep your social distance, which is 1.5 meters as recommended. In these difficult times, we are calling on brands and businesses to do good and give back. As a business, avail your resources and time to the less fortunate and help curb the spread of the virus. Welcome to the business news. The government is now asking Kenyan farmers to seize the opportunity from the impending food shortages due to the decline in cross-border trade with countries in the region and produce more food for local consumption. Well, despite allowing cargo vehicles to keep moving through the closed Tanzanian border, delays in clearance plus the decision to block entry of truck drivers who have turned positive means the country will be starved of critical food supplies from Tanzania. Victor Kiprop reports. Even before Saturday's announcement that Kenya would close its borders with Somalia and Tanzania except for cargo vehicles in order to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, Kenya was already feeling the COVID-19 hit. The decision to deny entry to truck drivers who have tested positive for the virus means supply of essential goods coming into the country has been disrupted, while delays in clearance for those who eventually make it into the country has seen traders counting losses running into billions of shillings as perishable goods go to waste. <laughs> Malaki lo mzigo ilikuja tarehe saba, boda ya tarakea, ilifungiwa, imekaa, hadi tarehe kumina sita ndio higa riangu naona hapa imefika. Kitungui na kawia, definitely kune enye itaribika in the process. Na mimu enye already umebai. So ile enye imearibika, hauta yuza venye ulinunua. Unoza bei bei kidogo, definitely unachomeka. Kenya relies on Tanzania for many products, mostly foodstuffs including vegetables and fruits. But now, the government wants Kenyan farmers to step in and fill the gap if Tanzanian products don't make it into the market. Kuna chakula kingi ambazo uletwa kutoka uh, Tanzania kwa masoko yetu wa sahapa na yobi. Eh, lakini hiyo nasema ni opportunity kwa wakulima kuchukua hiyo gap ambayo imeletwa Additional measures proposed by the Tanzanian government requiring all cargo transactions to be done at the border instead of trucks entering and leaving the country is likely to complicate matters even further for Kenya, which imported 33 billion shillings worth of goods from Tanzania in 2019. <laughs> 
nchi njirani tunaweza kupata wapi kwingine kwa sababu za tuna njirani moja tuko na njirani wengi tuko na njirani hapa Uganda tuko na njirani hapa Ethiopia fact chakula kingi pia utoka Ethiopia ningatasama tuone kama na chakula ambayo haipatikani hapa nchini ya kutosha ni njia gani tutaweza kuhakikisha imefika the border closures or delays in clearance will also affect Kenya's exports to the region, which the country's ministry in charge of East African affairs expects to fall by at least 30% in volumes. Victor Kiprop and TV Business. Business continuity and resilient services provider uh, con Continuity East Africa is set to invest over 500 million shillings over the next three years to expand its work area recovery facilities in the region, driven by the appreciation and accelerated uptake of business continuity services. The company has already invested 150 million shillings in the first phase of the project, which involved expanding the capacity of its work area recovery site at the United States International University USIU complex from 110 to 260 seats. The second phase will see the company grow the capacity to at least 800 seats in Nairobi and set up similar facilities in Kampala and Dar es Salaam. And across the region, so our next uh, plan is to do the same in uh, Uganda uh, and the same in Tanzania and on our recent uh, new license in Rwanda we'll also uh, look at expansion uh, into, into the other East African countries. So we see, we see much more demand coming for business continuity, uh, especially on the back of uh, recent uh, COVID-19 um, impacts where businesses have been dramatically impacted, where offices are no longer accessible. And locusts may not, ex oh, I beg your pardon, Kenya may not experience any new locust invasion the next two months due to changes in wind direction, but the country is adequately prepared in case there is a new attack by the destructive insects. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says progress has been made in the war against the invasion, which has been reduced to only four northeastern counties from a high of 27 counties at its peak. An assessment by Kenya Red Cross on the extent of the damage caused by locusts on the country's food security is currently underway with a preliminary report expected by June 15th. In June and July from outside the country because the wind directions are now changing from southerly to northerly. So what is likely to happen is if there are any remnants uh, livestock that are, I mean, uh, locals that are mature, they may be swept towards the north. Now, because we are not in control, there is also we live in the climate, climate change environment where you can't predict with extreme accuracy even the patterns. So, so we are still prepared and ready just in case uh, this information is not completely accurate. ABSA Bank Kenya has donated a total of 21,000 masks to Kenyatta University Teaching, Referral and Research Hospital in order to better equip frontline and other workers at the hospital in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The donation, which includes 1,000 KN95 masks and 20,000 three-ply surgical masks, follows another donation of 5,000 KN95 masks and 70,000 three-ply surgical masks donated to Kenyatta National Hospital last week. Last month, ABSA also contributed 50 million shillings to the country's COVID-19 emergency response fund. When it's collaborate, and this for us is a small token, and hopefully to go towards meeting some of the needs here at KU Teaching and Referral Hospital. As you know, we were gazetted as a treatment center, one of the few treatment centers in the country. So this N95 mask will be very, very useful to our frontline, frontline workers, uh, who are very many here. Uh, and also the other masks uh, are very key to our other workers here. So we want to thank the bank for thinking about this uh, particular facility. Um, and we are doing our best to, to support uh, Kenyans and the government. 
Right, we take a break at this point, but first, just have a look at these breathtaking images of Japan's Mount Fuji. It will now be closed during this year's summer climbing season to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus. Uh, Shizuoka Prefecture, home to the country's tallest mountain, announced they were closing three of the four major routes to the mountain's peak. The mountain, a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site, is located just 100 kilometers from Tokyo and is clearly visible from the Japanese capital. Look at that. Food has memory, and those who nourish you are never forgotten. Unakumbuka the auntie who made sure you shibad. Wejama wanyama. Ule nakwekea nyama poa ya choma. The dere. Happy to share your takeaway. Na uyo mama wa chai. Ule anawom your lunch before you ata uliza. You are mama mboga. Ule anakuongezia ata nyanya. Ule wito kusavara karaka. Na ule mandazi lady, ule anakweke ya nda umoja ya badai. Na you are boda boda rider, ule jamao kufikisha araka araka. Now this is the time to let them know they are not forgotten. This is the time to make sure every table in Kenya has food on it. The points on your phone can be food in their home. When you sit with a plate of food today, pledge to stand for someone who has put food before you. Dial star 126 hash to transfer your bonga points now so they can buy food and necessities at any outlet with a lipa na mpesa till. Safaricom is for you. Credit to you if you stay at home. If you must shop online, use your NCBA credit card. Stay home. Stay safe. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the 1, 2, 3 with Colgate every night. Internationally now, and Italy was one of the hardest hit countries by COVID-19 in the world. But the European country is now beginning to open up as worshippers flocked places of worship. Faithful have also been attending mass in the West African country of Ivory Coast as China works to find a vaccine. Judith Cerono with more. Christians are a happy lot in Italy as churches reopen as part of a fresh wave of lockdown easing in Europe. A handful of faithful queued at St. Peter's observing social distancing rules and were watched by police officers wearing face masks before having their temperatures taken to enter the church. Italy will also allow businesses such as restaurants, bars, cafes, hairdressers and stores to reopen. But the World Health Organization has warned that reopening too quickly without a vaccine could trigger a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. Large public gatherings are still forbidden. China has five potential vaccines in clinical trials. The president said they released the genome sequence at the earliest time and shared control and treatment experiences with the world without reservation, adding that China has done everything in its power to assist countries in need. He added that when a vaccine is developed and available for use, China will ensure vaccine accessibility and affordability in developing countries. China says it will provide two billion U.S. dollars within two years for international assistance for supporting countries affected by the pandemic. The leadership has strenuously denied accusations of a cover-up, insisting that it has always shared information to WHO and relevant countries in the most timely fashion. 
Ivory Coast has recorded 2,109 coronavirus cases, a total of 27 deaths and 1,004 recoveries. The country has reopened churches across the country with new safety measures amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Faithful flocked places of worship on the first Sunday after the ban on places of worship was lifted. Clerics led worshippers in mass and Sunday devotions while strictly adhering to the safety measures set by the government. One of the preachers is seen informing his parishioners that he is happy to see them and they should strictly observe the instructions and stay within the framework of safety. All right, let's take a break at this point. The sports news is coming up next with Brian. Shop online and pay with your Visa card securely for groceries and other essentials, e-learning subscriptions, online entertainment subscriptions, as well as all other bills online. With Visa, you can make payments online using your Visa card in three easy steps. Simply go to the checkout page, select Visa card, enter your card information, and your purchase is securely completed. Safe is smart. Visa, everywhere you want to be. Terms and conditions apply. If we continue to behave normally, this disease will treat us abnormally. Agatha, where are we going? To my house, because I, I have to get something What are you there. doing here? I'm calling Dad. Don't! I can't go back to jail just yet, not until I've rescued Mother, since she's with Rocco. How could you have raised your kids to be the selfish, despicable people they've become? I just want you to know that I regret all the terrible things I did to you. I hope you can give me a chance. I want to make it up to all we of you. We still have a chance to be together again. We must work together to save our Mother. We can be strong together, because we're sisters. Invest in Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Luxury you can afford. Call us today on 0790-300-300 or visit www.optivan.co.ke. Let's have a look at the day's sports news. Welcome, my name is Brian Otwal. With no play going on, Tennis Kenya urged its players to take the time to learn new things and adapt better ways of playing the game in readiness for when play resumes after the coronavirus pandemic. Kenya ranked 76 in the world by the end of last year and failed to qualify for Group 2 of the Davis Cup and as such, the Federation hopes to come back stronger as it focuses on developing youth talents in the sport. Coronavirus pandemic has affected sports worldwide, but it's biting more on Tennis Kenya's plans to develop the game in the country. The Federation has since sought ways to adapt and improve the sport without much play. So we've got coaches doing challenges for their students online and posting it and letting the kids try and do the same thing and then post it for their teammates to see. So we've pretty much tried to emulate the same thing with online coaching. Before the cancellation of sporting events, Kenya's star in tennis seemed to be shining, with the nation battling to improve its status at the Davis Cup. Kenya's hope of featuring in the Euro and Africa Group 2 tournament later in September this year was however shattered after they lost two of their decisive rubbers to Indonesia in the best of five playoffs in Jakarta. We have potential to do better with less breaks, I think we're able to achieve our potential as a country. 
However, for now, the breaks are inevitable, being the new norm. IOC says that some of the sports that should be able to be played safely, uh, golf, tennis, even when the government says now we can play tennis, we don't have the facilities, we rely on tennis clubs which is a full club. So we rely on those sports clubs to be open for us to have access to the facility. So it's still gonna take us even longer, even after that is approved. The last time Kenya qualified for Euro and Africa Group 2 was in 1992. Bettering that record has since been a challenge with few facilities available to nurture talents countrywide. Rosemary Owino, who doubles up as the Davis Cup team captain and coach, believes the pandemic has given the Federation a chance to tie loose strings in developing tennis in the country. Time like this makes us think, oh, okay, maybe we need to talk to the government, maybe find some government courts somewhere around Umoja, build tennis courts there. Tennis Kenya seeks to invest in the youth rank of players with the hope of building a winning team for the future. Joining the ranks of current prodigies Kevin Cheriot, Ibrahim Kibet, Petty Ananda, Ryan Randiek, Ismail Changawa and Olivia Kigoto. Moving on and renovations at the Ruringu Stadium is underway with the construction of the perimeter wall nearing completion after the project stalled three years ago. The planned upgrading of the stadium to international standards by the national government is still a mirage with no work done in the pit. President Uru Kenyatta launch, launched the project in June 2017 with phase one of the upgrade set to cost 280 million shillings. So far, 20 million shillings was spent for the perimeter wall, even as the country hopes the national government can fast track the construction of the stadium, which has stalled due to lack of funding. Due to its central location, Ruringu Stadium will serve Kirinyaga, Muranga, Nyandarua, Laikipia, and Nyeri counties during major championships. Ours was to fence off, and uh, we did the beaconing. We have done the fencing, which is, which we can say we are about 50%, which was phase one. The other 50%, we are doing it in the financial year 2019-2020. So by the close of uh, the financial year, June 2020, we'll be through with our part. And staying on stadia, meanwhile, that is in Kajiado County. The county government has started renovating Gong Stadium, the work which Governor Joseph Olilenku believes will be completed in two years' time. According to Lenku, the county will also revamp Kajiado and Kitengela stadiums in a way of nurturing talents in his county. Joshua Makori reports. This is the Ngong Stadium, which is in the center of Ngong Town in Kajiado County. This stadium is in high altitude, a condition mostly preferred by athletes in terms of training when preparing for national and international championships. The stadium has been undergoing renovation for many years without completion. Hivi karibuni tutaanza kuweka ataf pale kwenye hiyo uwanja so that your wanja ikue pia ni mali ariadha na mali ampira. According to Lenku, the county will also revamp Kajiado and Kitengela Stadia. Na kwa hivyo tunataa kueka mchango yetu kama serikali ya county katika ramani ya Kenya, kama county moja ambayo ikona wanja za michezo za kisasa. Na kwa hivyo hiyo ujensi naendelea na itakamilika kwa chini ya miaka miwili. The previous county regime spent over 140 million shillings in construction of terraces with Lenku's administration committing 80 million shillings. The county of Kajiado has produced a number of sports people who have earned accolades both nationally and internationally. Marshall, anatoka hapa kwetu kwa sababu wataya pia ni mkaji wa hapa. Marshall Muro, ambaya ni kuwa ni kocha mkuu wa taifa hii ya Kenya ametoka mahali hapa na ukiangalia watu kama hawa ndio wanafaa kuwekwa katika county government wale watu ambao wana maono ya kimichezo 
ambayo inaweza saidia vijana kwa sababu wamekuwa mahali pale. Good job mwetiti ambaye amekuwa world champion atonya ngong, makao mwenye amekuwa former world record holder ametonya pangong. 2018 Kenyan Premier League Player of the Year and Kariyo Bangi Sharks forward Eric Kapaito also hails from the region. Tunajua tuko na talanta nzuri lakini kumekuwa na ukosefu wa sehemu kwa hiyo talanta kukuzwa. Na kwa hivyo katika mpango yetu tunataka kukuza hizo talanta na natoa hakikisho kwa vijana wetu kwamba hizo talanta zao watakuwa na mali ya kukuzia. Yoshua Makori NTV Sport Ngong Stadium Kajiado County. And one of the talented athletes there, Helen Oviri, who is the 5,000 meters world champion, is urging the government to continue supporting athletes from all counties without selective bias during this period of the coronavirus pandemic. Oviri, who is also the African champion and Commonwealth uh, Games champion, has acknowledged, acknowledged that athletes' training has been affected despite efforts at home. Saitu kiangalia wanariada seme like country Kenya watu wameathirika kuna upcoming athletes so finally kitu ningeonelea serikali ingefanya kuna food ambao wanasakateana upcoming athletes ili waweze kutrain wafike mahali wanafaa kufika sababu sometimes tunapata elite athletes ako na something so ile kitu ningeomba wakumbuke pia kuna wakibiachi wa ngong ambao wanahitaji chakula sio other countries au other counties so hata ngong tuko na wakibiachi wengi saidi ambao wanahitaji usaidizi ya serikali na ile pesa ambayo ilipeanwa pia wanayo wakumbuke kuna wakibiachi ngong wata watahitaji wa pesa from gong to england and premier league clubs have agreed to stage one of the return to training protocols which allows teams to start training in small groups from tuesday Clubs uh, voted unanimously on the decision at Monday's project restart meeting and players must observe social distancing rules and a contact, uh, that is contact tracing uh, training in, is not permitted. The first stage has been agreed in consultation with players, managers, club doctors, independent experts and government. Ongoing surveillance uh, measures include twice weekly testing and a daily pre-training questionnaire and temperature check. Clubs have been carrying out coronavirus testing this weekend. And Celtic have been confirmed as Scottish champions for the ninth season in a row and Hearts have been relegated after the SPFL ended the season. The decision was taken at a board meeting after the 12 clubs agreed at the end of last week that completing the campaign was unfeasible. A a average points per game played has been used to determine final placings and Celtic were 13 points ahead of nearest challengers, that is Rangers, having played a game more when the season was put in uh, abeyance. Hearts were four adrift of Hamilton uh, Academical at bottom with a possible 24 points available. This even as Spanish clubs began training in groups of 10 players in line with health protocols as La Liga takes another step towards the planned resumption of the coronavirus hit season next month. On the pitch to work, you know, with the, with the boys. Uh, now we just need to wait for the, for the games, but I'm very, very happy. After two months out, uh, it just, you know, I need more fitness and, uh, and more with the ball. So I just want to be ready for the, for the next game. No, now it's, now it's better. We can train more like we like to do it. Uh, you know, the first week of, was a bit strange, but now, now we can be back in group and uh, with goalkeepers as well. So it's more like we want, you know. So now we just want to be all together and try to, to work as a group. On that note, we end sports, but we keep playing on and on as Ida Waringa will be taking this ship moving forward from tomorrow as I take a rest. Have a lovely night. My name is Brian Atwal. All right, Brian, thanks. I too will be taking a rest. Thanks for watching. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Mark Masai takes over tomorrow. Flora Atiano has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Have yourselves a good day tomorrow and remember, stay safe.
TV. I help women find independence by training them in fish farming. Oh it's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. If taking care of someone with intellectual disability, such as autism, maintain high levels of cleanliness and ensure their movements happen only when absolutely necessary. The restrictions instituted by the government to curb the spread of coronavirus have led to the closure of bars, restrictions in movement and the burning of public gatherings. This has seen a majority of the population take alcohol in their homes or in areas where they would have traditionally shied off from consuming it. This may also be attributed to an increase in cases of domestic violence, psychological distress and mental illness. This Wednesday, 20th May 2020, join NACADA on NTV at 7.30pm. During a live virtual forum, NACADA will discuss the effects of alcohol and the role of society in dealing with it, especially as Kenya deals with the COVID-19 pandemic. Agatha, where are we going? To my house, because I, I have to get some...